Hey, it's me, Lucas Ross, CFA, CPA, and Realtor. I'm here to help you make money in real estate. Talking about multiple offer situations today, run you through a few scenarios. Base case scenario, we start. If there's no other offers, if there's no other offers, you write in a financing contingency and an inspection contingency. Financing protects you in case your financing fails, even all the way up until the day of closing. Inspection is where you a contingency is where you inspect the property after you've already reached an agreement on price and terms with the seller. And then after you do the inspection, you may renegotiate based on your findings from the inspection. That's what you write when there's no other offers, right? You're the only guy in town. Second scenario. This is like, let's say there's one or two other offers or something like that. So there is competition. You know you have to make your offer really airtight in order to win the deal. What you might do is you might waive financing and waive inspection. So you're so confident in financing, you don't need protection because you're just, you know it'll close. You, the loan will, won't be a problem. Waiving inspection is where you inspect the property before writing your offer. So you write the offer and the offer says the house is as is and there won't be any renegotiations based on the condition of the property. This is normal, right? Where you submit earnest money and it's held by escrow throughout the transaction and then it's applied to your down payment at closing. This is a really strong offer. Now, let's say there's not one or two other offers, there's 10 other offers, okay? So you are uh, you know, a needle in a haystack trying to get noticed. Okay, you're gonna do all the good things that you did here, waive the financing, waive inspection, but this is the nuclear option. This is where you're just going all out. What you do here is you submit the earnest money to the escrow, but instruct the escrow to immediately release that earnest money to the seller before closing. So you, you might submit the offer on day one and, and you know, have a closing that's 25 days out or something like that. Well, you, you, you'll submit the earnest money right away and give the earnest money to the seller immediately, right? So they hold the earnest money in their own bank account. It's their own money. It's released to them throughout the transaction. And it's still applied to the purchase price and everything. But the, the big thing is that in this scenario, if something does go wrong, which is very rare, but it could, then the buyer can still say, oh, no, no, like the seller lied about something. Don't give them the earnest money. I want the earnest money. And then the only way, way for the seller to get the earnest money is to go to court for it. In this scenario, they just have the earnest money in their own bank account. So it's a done deal. They rest easy. They're not worried about it. They know you're not messing around because you've already given up the earnest money and you don't have any safety net to fall back on if you don't close the transaction. So these are some of the scenarios that might help you if you are in a situation, for instance, if there's 10 offers, this is the kind of the thing that you can do the, that's the strongest move uh, for your offer. LucasRoth.com. Uh, see me there. Hit like and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.